and take your respective seats. To prevent the loss of lives and property during various disasters and calamities that are imminent, leading to catastrophic consequences. The role of technology becomes more significant in reducing the devastating impact of these disasters. Our Honourable Prime Minister's 10-point agenda for disaster risk reduction also stresses upon leveraging technology to enhance the efficiency of disaster risk management efforts. In furtherance of its endeavours to strengthen the disaster management and preparedness framework, National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, headed by the Honourable Prime Minister, has operationalized a nationwide integrated alert system based on ITU Common Alerting Protocol, CAP, that has been indigenously designed and developed by the Centre for Development of Telematics, CDOT, the premier R&D centre of the Department of Telecommunications, Ministry of Communications, Government of India. It is very heartening to see that the Honourable Prime Minister's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat, powered by the collective spirit and harmonious synergy of Gati Shakti, is taking shape. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of NDMA and CDOT, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this one-day workshop that aims to acquaint the concerned stakeholders with the myriad capabilities of the Indigenous Integrated Alert System in dissemination of the targeted real-time alerts and advisories to the people in the disaster-prone areas in vernacular languages on all available communication media, including SMS, radio, TV, satellite, sirens, social media, and other web-based applications. This one-day workshop will make us delve into the intricacies of disaster management and preparedness amid insightful deliberations with a galaxy of field veterans and domain experts in the exclusively tailored technical sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, this workshop has been made more special with the esteemed presence of Sri K. Rajaraman, Chairman, Digital Communications Commission and Secretary, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India, who has kindly consented to be a part of this workshop, despite his exceedingly busy schedule. We extend a very warm and hearty welcome to you, sir. As part of our green endeavor to spread awareness about environmental conservation and protection of our Mother Earth, may I now request Sri Kamal Kishore, Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, to formally welcome Sri K. Rajaraman, Chairman, Digital Communications Commission, and Secretary, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India, with a potted sapling and a traditional Angobastra. <laughs> management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, with a potted sapling and a traditional Angobastra. continuous path of prosperity and development. May God give us strength to surmount all hurdles that impede our path to enlightenment. Ladies and gentlemen, we all are indebted to our motherland for giving us a unique identity and nurturing us with its unparalleled affection and bountiful resources. Let us pay homage to our great nation. May I request you all 
to please rise for the National Anthem Plan, National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, for delivering the welcome address and giving us an overview of the objectives of the workshop. So very good morning to all the dignities on the dais and of the dais. Before I begin, I'd like to wish happy Ganesh Chaturthi to all the uh, all of you who are present here in this hall today. I welcome Sri K. Rajaraman sir, Secretary Telecom. I also welcome Uma Devi ma'am, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Home Affairs. I welcome Kamal Kishore sir, Member Secretary NDMA, all the members of NDMA, all the members of Department of Telecom, all officers of NDMA. I welcome Director General NDRF, Atul Karwal sir. I welcome IMD Director General Mahapatra sir. All the DG CDAC, Magesa, all the officers of various organizations who are present here, to name them from Ministry of Information Broadcasting, Inquise, Forest Survey of India, ISRO, Indian Railways, Central Armed Police Forces, officers of NDRF, DG NIC and his team, officers from NIDM, representative from the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Ravinder Singh Ji from the Central Water Commission, Dr. Amrik Singh, Additional Director, DGRE, other panelists, speakers from the alert generating agencies, disseminating agencies, authorizing agencies, all the 14 state relief commissioners who have traveled long distances to be here with us today. Around 52 nodal officers of both the projects, CAP project and ERSS project. Some of the states could not participate, especially Maharashtra because of the festivities. This is a more important day. I think uh, this project uh, CAP project started in August 2021 and this is exactly the last day of August 2022. It has been one year of implementation of this project during COVID times. We have met, I have met almost everybody present in this hall on online platforms, whether it was in the steering committee meeting or the technical committee meeting or the fortnightly review meetings. But uh, there's always a chance, uh, there should always be a chance to look back as to what have we done for last one year, try to find out where we are, what the project used to say, what the project says that should be achieved. It's good to have a midterm correction. So the uh, purpose of this workshop, if I can name them, are four. The first is that the technical and awareness in the 36 states and union territories about both the projects is very, very important. It's not that they are not aware, but it's good to be on one forum, hear from the project proponents, hear from the alert generating agencies, hear from the alert disseminating agencies on the one platform. So that is one very important uh, objective of this workshop. The second is always to, as I told earlier, look at the status of implementation. What are the challenges we are facing right now? how we can go faster in implementation of this project, what are the other things that we can do under CAP uh, project. So I think uh, that is very important. So the third is looking at future of these projects. No? So the current CAP phase one has a limited objective, but it builds upon a lot of other uh, projects that could come in the pipeline, could be implemented by the Ministry of Railways, by the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, uh, by various uh, disseminating agencies possible. So it's also a time to look at those possibilities and also uh, the most important is to uh, make sure that by the time in the evening we leave this uh, hall, we are uh, slightly better or more uh, aware about the whole concept of CAP project and ERSS project. So we all, uh, whether it is the implementing agency in the National Disaster Management Authority, 
the makers of this project in CDOT or the uh, five important alert generating agencies and the most critical, most critical is the 36 states and union territories. They all, we all are on the same page, we understand the project similarly and we uh, are aware about the deliverables and the objectives of this project. So there are four uh, sessions uh, today. If you look at the schedule, the first session is uh, generally about the uh, CAP project, what this project, how it has evolved till now, what it wants to deliver, what are the objectives, what will happen with the CAP phase one implementation. We are also looking at the other uh, worst, world's best practices, how CAP is uh, being implemented in other countries. So that is the uh, session one, basically a uh, primer about what is CAP, uh, what does CAP mean actually and what CAP entails. The second is very important because there are five alert, alert generating agencies in this project. To name them, IMD, Central Water Commission, INCOIS, DGRE and FSI. All five will make brief presentations about what their role is, where they have, where are they in the implementation portion. The third uh, session is basically moving ahead, looking at the future from the alert dissemination possibilities. Apart from SMS, uh, moving ahead to cell broadcast, moving ahead to railways. So we have got officers from railways and information broadcasting share their, sharing their views uh, from those ministries about what are the possibilities in their concern department. We want to reach the last person and in, in, in disseminate the information quickly. As to what are the challenges and what do you think about this project? Because ultimately at the end of the day, the implementation is going to be done by the 36 states and UTs. So we like to hear from all of you. Uh, you might be having some great models in your own states and UTs. You may talk about that, we like to capture that. But it is an open house in the fourth session where we like to share experiences both sides of the table and followed by your discipline. So I hope, uh, I, I hope that we, uh, when we go back to this uh, one day uh, workshop, which was long overdue, uh, exactly on the uh, one year of implementation of this project, we are clear about what has happened in the past, we are also clear about what is happening in the present, and we also have some direction towards what could be the possibilities in the future. Thank you so much. Yeah. May I now request Dr. Raj Kumar Bhatiai, Executive Director CDOT, for delivering the opening address. Uh, K. Rajaramanji, Chairman, Digital Communication Commission and Secretary Telecom, Government of India. Sri Kamal Kishorji, Member Secretary, NDMA. Respected V. V. Umadevi Ji, Additional Secretary, MHA, Government of India. Sri Krishna S. Vatsa Ji, Member, NDMA. Sri Rajin Singh Ji, Member, NDMA. Dr. Pankaj Dalila, Director, CDOT. Sri Kunal Sityati Ji, Joint Secretary, NDMA. Dignitaries of the dais, esteemed speakers, distinguished guests from NDMAs, SDMAs, DOT, CDOT, and other government departments, representatives from media and press, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. At the outset, I welcome you all to this one day workshop on common alerting protocol, uh, which is based on integrated alert system. Uh, that is aimed at giving thoughtful insights into various aspects of effective disaster management and resilient early warning system, highlighting the role of technology as well as the synergy among the department. As Satyathi ji mentioned, there are various agencies which are actually involved in getting this project through multiple alert generating agencies, state governments, broadcasting, railways, NHAI. Very, it's a, it's a multi uh, uh, ministry kind of project. Uh, I First of all, uh, uh, this project is being done jointly by NDMA and CDOT. So on behalf of CDOT uh, and of course NDMA, I would express my sincere thanks uh, and gratitude to Sri K. Rajaramanji, Chairman Digital Communication Commission, who have always been a source of inspiration for us and encouragement for us. Uh, for all the endeavors what we do at CDOT, I welcome you to this workshop, sir. I also welcome Srimati Bibi Madhavi ji, Additional Secretary, MHA, Government of India, and thank for thank her for her special time, and as well as the support uh, to CDOT uh, for you know during the course of when the project was being thought of and during the implementation. I also welcome Shri Kamal Kishore ji, Member Secretary, NDMA, uh, Member Shri Krishna Vatsa ji, uh, and Rajendra Singh ji, Member NDMA, to this workshop. Uh, 
I would like to thank, uh, on behalf of CDOT, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank NDMA, who actually posed the trust on CDOT uh, and its engineers that we can design this kind of system. You may be aware that this ITU cap system is implemented only in five countries. We are the sixth country who will be implementing this. And this is a standard based, uh, since uh, it is the standards are made by International Telecommunication Union. Uh, and uh, these, this project is being implemented as per the standard of ITU. Since it is a standardized implementation, uh, the, you know, in terms of interconnecting various new things in this will be much more easier because this is standard based. It's truly a matter of national pride that, uh, you know, uh, we are uh, implementing this in our country. And uh, uh, as Satyati ji said, we got the uh, order from NDMA to implement in somewhere last August with a timeline of Feb 23. That we were told that by Feb 23, phase one should be done. But I'm happy to inform you that the project is almost done. By, on 50, by 15th of August, we had already connected uh, completely 34 states and UTs, only two are pending and that two also we have done. There is some issue with these two states in terms of who will manage. Otherwise, from the perspective of uh, uh, readiness, the project is already ready. And I would also like alert portal driven by three A's, alert awareness action. Basically, uh, one way of disseminating the alerts is via SMS, via uh, railway platform, via NHI, via postal silence, via Twitter, via WhatsApp, via social media, all that. But we are also making this portal so that if anybody wants to, you know, have a look at various disaster kind of information can be done from a single portal. Currently, if I have to look at the websites of IMD, I have to look at the website of Encois, Sase, uh, various uh, alert generating agencies. So we'll collate all of them and give all this information on the portal itself. We are also developing a mobile app which will actually give you alert and a notification as you move uh, from one place to another. For example, you are traveling from Chandigarh to Shimla, if anything happens in this duration, the app will let you know. And both the portal and the app has the facility of read aloud. So even if you are not, don't have to read, it will read the whole thing for you. Uh, the next uh, uh, phase we are working, although it was not part of the project, but we are taking it up, that once the you get the alert as a SMS or as a WhatsApp or as a anything, we are also building one uh, module where you will say that, okay, I am safe, please rescue me, please I need medicine, whatever, so, so that the, all these information what we collect back is given in a, in a map to uh, uh, district authorities for taking necessary action. Uh, so phase two, in fact, since the project has been done earlier, we were talking to Satyati ji and NDMA that even phase two can start very uh, early. The phase two, what I mean by is phase two is uh, we have done only pilot right now with radio, with TV, with NHI, with railway. So later on it will be implemented pan India across all railway station, across all radio station, across all televisions. Uh, I would also use, you know, take this opportunity to uh, mentioned that CDOT has come up with a collaborative research policy, CDOT collaborative research policy under which we do fund and we do collaborate with the industry uh, for developing various uh, solutions which are based on the problem statement. So I would be very happy that, you know, if the various stakeholders, uh, very senior officers are here in the uh, hall, if they can come and give us the problem statements so that can be developed to the industry at, at our cost. The same way, uh, uh, you know, the emerging dimensions of technology, uh, we are taking, keeping track uh, so that the new, newer ways of disseminating these alerts also will be implemented in this. And uh, today, uh, there are multiple sessions. We have sessions overview of CAP, role of alert disseminating agencies, user experience of alert, various alert genetic agencies, user experience of state, so that all the uh, learnings and all the problems, all the challenges, what the field is facing, we will be able to collate that and implement in our uh, system. I'm, I hope this uh, workshop will be very useful for the participants and uh, uh, I wish all the success and we wish that uh, we get enough feedback 
so that that is implemented and we prepare a world class system for our country. Cap, uh, what this cap is all about, uh, so the video will be clear. India, flora, fauna and cultures, but also about its geographical features. From the Himalayas to the ocean, from the desert to the vast plains, India presents a unique topography. Its physiographic, demographic and climatic additions make it more prone to both natural as well as man-made disasters. Floods, cyclone, landslide, tsunami, heavy rainfall, storm, wreak havoc on life, livestock and produce, causing the world highest loss of lives and goods over the last 20 years. Predicting natural disasters accurately, alerting the people and allows exchanging of public warning information based on all media, all hazard communication. The system provides integrated and unified approach for public alerting for all disaster events. It ensures last mile visibility through light and broadcasting so that the right information reaches the right people at the right time in the right way. In the monsoon season, Heavy rainfall, rising water level cause inundation of land and roads. Floods are a common phenomenon in various parts. Storm surges, cloud bursts can also affect severe for fishermen who venture out to the sea during cyclones or deep depression stage. Integrated alert system will provide early warning on their mobile via Gagan or Navig using satellite communication in the regions where conventional network is unavailable or disrupted. The system will also advise whether or not to proceed with their fishing activities. Cyclones are usually accompanied by heavy rainfall, strong winds and storm, causing devastating damage along the coastal parts. During such a surge, the system will alert through coastal cycle, mobile app, SMS, so that the local populace and tourists can take precautionary measures Go to nearest cyclone center or higher ground. It is also integrated as an early warning system for lightning, heavy rainfall, or gusty winds. You can take shelter at an appropriate safe place by checking the map to find the nearest shelter. CAN Integrated Alert System The disaster warning platform to save India from natural calamities as well as man-made disasters and move towards an informed, aware resilient and prosperous station. Alert system for disaster management and preparedness that manifests synergy between CDOT, NDMA and other government departments. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Srimati Bidi Omadevi, Additional Secretary, Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, to address us all on this event. Uh, respected Sri. Uh, K. Rajaramanji, Secretary Telecom, Sri Kamal Kishor, Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, other dignitaries on the dais, officers from the state government dealing with the state uh, disaster management authorities, and uh, the members and officials of the National Disaster Management Authority. Officers of Department of Telecom, Center for Development of uh, Telematics, CDOT, Center for Development of Advanced uh, Computing, CDAC, Telecom Regulatory Authority, Officers from Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Ministry of Railways, Officials from the five alert generating agencies, namely the uh, Indian Meteorological Department, Forest Survey of India, Central Water Commission, uh, Defense Geoinformatics Research Establishment, the National Center for Oceanic Information Services, NCOIS, ISRO. A very good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, let me at the outset uh, compliment uh, National Disaster Management Authority for organizing this a very important uh, workshop on this uh, common alerting protocol based uh, integrated alert system and uh, bringing 
all the stakeholders, the relevant stakeholders on a common platform to exchange ideas on uh, the implementation of this very important project of government of India. As we all know, uh, India as a country has done extremely well and has uh, uh, there has been a lot of improvement in the field of disaster management in the last few decades. Whether it is uh, putting the institutional mechanism in place, we have a three-tier institutional mechanism the National Disaster Management Authority at the center, the State Disaster Management Authority of the state, and the District Disaster Management Authority of the districts. We also have the, the National Response Force for dealing with the, uh, the disasters. And we also have uh, full-fledged uh, legislations in place, the Disaster Management Act, 2005 and we also have improved our methodologies in the forecasting and uh, the forecasting has be, uh, become more accurate and uh, we've also changed our concept of, from relief centric to a more uh, holistic approach involving uh, mitigation prevention response relief recovery and rehabilitation so this uh, common alerting protocol uh, is uh, an initiative taken by National Disaster Management Authority in pursuance of the Agenda 5 and Agenda 7 of the Disaster Risk Reduction lead, uh, Agenda laid down by the 10-point agenda laid down by our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, which is to leverage technology and other social media as well as uh, the mobile technologies to increase the efficiency of uh, uh, the uh, disaster risk reduction management systems. And this is uh, fully uh, funded by Government of India. And uh, this, as mentioned by the Executive Director of CDOT, has commenced uh, in August uh, 2021, and uh, uh, I congratulate uh, CDOT for completion of the first phase of uh, this uh, project in uh, this year, August. Uh, the, this first phase, as mentioned by my earlier speakers, it uh, envisages integration of all the five alert uh, uh, generating agencies and the alert disseminating agencies like the telecom service providers and the alert uh, authorizing agencies that is the state disaster agencies and uh, by integration this would definitely uh, reduce the time taken to alert the citizens as well as the first responders to be prepared to any impending disaster so uh, the scope of this uh, project will be, as mentioned by earlier speakers, will be enhanced in the second phase of the project, wherein uh, the, the, the multiple telecom service providers will be linked to broadcast to uh, broadcast through cell broadcast or through television or the radio, or it will also be linked with the Indian Railway Information System. I would also like to uh, inform this August gathering and it's a great pleasure in informing you that this particular project is a completely a Make in India project designed by uh, Department of Telecommunications. And uh, after completion of this project, India will be in one of the, uh, uh, in the select list of uh, the uh, uh, countries which have already have uh, this system. And uh, in addition to this, NTMA has also taken another initiative to link uh, the emergency response systems to the, uh, 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 to extend this extension of emergency response system to cater to the disaster emergencies. That is to link the emergency response uh, number, dial 112, a single emergency number, 
and include uh, disaster emergencies, link it to uh, dial 112. So uh, with the uh, uh, climate change happening and uh, uh, with the recent examples of uh, the unexpected uh, heat waves in UK and uh, the flood situation in Pakistan and many others, uh, we need to come up with more such in initiatives. I would request NDMA to come up with the more such innovative ideas so that we can effectively uh, manage uh, uh, these disasters in a more efficient manner. And uh, in future, in and time to come, disaster management would be would attain more prominence because of uh, the phenomenon of uh, climate change. So I, at the, now uh, I uh, thank the organizers for uh, organizing this uh, very important uh, <coughs> workshop, and I hopefully you'll be able to come up with more solutions to the gaps and uh, come up with, uh, you'll be able to deliberate and come up with more uh, outcomes in the end of this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for gracing this occasion with your esteemed presence and sharing your valuable insights into evolving a holistic approach for disaster management and preparedness. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Sri Kamal Kishore, Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, NTMA, for delivering this special address. Good morning, everyone. Our Honorable Secretary, Department of Telecommunications, Sri Raja Raman, uh, Distant Secretary uh, in the Ministry of Home Affairs, Madam Madhavi, uh, CDOT Executive Director, uh, Dr. Upadhyay, uh, my colleagues, Mr. Dalela, Mr. Kunal Satyati, uh, my colleague members of NDMA, uh, officers of NDMA, uh, DG of Alert Generating Agencies, I see Dr. Mahapatra, DG of Responder Agencies such as um, DG of NDRF, um, and uh, above all colleagues who have come all the way from the state capitals to participate in this event. Uh, I want to say a few things. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that this is an extremely important initiative uh, for NDMA. Uh, it has support from the highest levels of the government. There are a lot of expectations from this initiative. Why is this initiative important? This initiative is important for two reasons. The first reason is that we all know uh, the number of disasters, the frequency of disasters, the intensity of disasters is increasing. However good our early warning, however good our forecast, it is not effective unless it reaches the last person who needs to use that information for responding to the event, for saving lives and livelihoods. And the second thing is that there is something changing about the pattern of disasters as well, particularly weather and climate-related disasters. Not all disasters like cycl are like cyclones that give you five days lead time. Not all disasters are like floods that affect a large swath of land. There are so many events happening that are highly localized and that give you very short lead time. And our warning dissemination has to be location specific and very specific to disaster happening in that location. How do we reach people who were affected in the Amarnath tragedy that happened in July? How do we reach people who were affected by a small set of landslides in some northeastern part of the country? That is the challenge. How do we make it specific to a location, make our early warning dissemination timely, efficient and presented in a manner that is, it is actionable, usable and understandable. It is people-centric. So I think that is the reason we need to do this. We have to cater to the needs of 1.3 billion people of the country. There is no part of the country where you can say that there will never be a disaster. And we, if you 
make a warning dissemination which is generic, which is over a large uh, part of area and only a small fraction is affected, nobody is going to take your early warning seriously. So it is for that reason that this is a very important initiative and not succeeding is not a choice. You know, it must succeed. We take pride in the fact that we are joining the League of Canada and Australia and US um, and Italy. Uh, there are a handful of countries, I think five or six countries uh, that have a common alerting protocol. Uh, but that's just patting ourselves on the back just because we're joining that league is not enough. The system really has to work. And that's where comes this workshop. I personally have three expectations from this workshop. The first is, you know, we have the solution providers here. Dr. Upadhyay in his remarks said that he hopes that uh, the workshop will be useful for the participants. I am hoping that it will be useful for you as well. Because this is your time to get feedback from people from the state who will be actually using the system for early warning. So that's the first thing, you know, how do we demystify what is there in the system? How do we understand this? You know, I would encourage particularly the alert generating agencies as well as states to ask all the hard questions you want to ask. Please be fully present during the day and ask all the hard questions of CDOT, of NDMA, of alert agency. What is it? What is the promise? What are you going to deliver? My second expectation is that while we are doing this, driving this from the national level, the states are also doing stuff. There are so many states that have generated, set up systems for early warning dissemination. We have a project cyclone risk mitigation program which has supported states in some other ways in uh, dissemination of early warning. So how do we ensure that these systems are complementary? You know, how do we make sure that we are not duplicating stuff? You know, we are not an extremely rich country. We can't afford to waste even a single rupee. You know, so we must ensure that what we are doing through CAP complements the efforts that are already underway by the states. I think that's the second thing. The third thing is that, you know, this is, we are in it for the long haul. You know, as Dr. Upadhyay said, the first phase is over, the second phase will start. What would be the next phase look like? We have to do some thinking about that as well. So I think with these three things, you know, ask all the hard questions, understand the system fully, what the promise is, what, what are we planning to deliver, ensure that it's complementary with what the states are doing for themselves, and think ahead. With that, as I said, not succeeding in getting this exactly right, taking care of the early warning needs of 1.3 billion people, we have to get it right, not succeeding is not a choice. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you, sir, for sharing your insightful views on the critical need of an integrated platform for disaster management based on latest technology endeavors offering a high degree of ease of access. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to have the gracious presence of Rike Rajaram, Chairman, Digital Communications Commission and Secretary, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India. Rike Rajaram is an Indian Administrative Service IAS officer of 1989 batch from Tamil Nadu, Qatar. He has held many important positions in the union government, including the Department of Expenditure and the Ministry of Finance. Sri Rataraman has also held several key positions in the government of Tamil Nadu, including Managing Director of Chennai Metro Rail Limited. Madam Madhavi, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Home Affairs, Mr. Kamil Kishore, Member Secretary of the National Disaster Management Authority, Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Mr. Dalila, uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, the Joint Secretary from the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, Mr. Atul Karwal, and uh, other dignitaries who have come for this conference, the uh, representatives of state governments, uh, central ministries uh, from the various uh, government agencies including DOT, uh, CDOT, CDAC uh, and other uh, specialist agencies dealing with uh, uh, the disaster. I, uh, first of all, a very good morning to all of you and uh, I'm, I wish to express my, my happiness in that the fact that uh, NDMA and CDOT are working together very closely 
along with state governments and other stakeholders in making um, a greater uh, effective disaster um, response possible in this country. All of us, I mean, as uh, Mr. Kamal Kishore mentioned, lives, uh, saving lives is no option, I think. Saving lives is a fundamental uh, responsibility of all, uh, of the government in specific, and all of us in, in general. So therefore, uh, the possibility of saving every human life through any means is something which all of us are really concerned about as part of the overall disaster um, um, risk mitigation as well as in terms of uh, the overall disaster response, rescue relief efforts. So uh, from that perspective, I would say that the country has marched very well forward and thanks to the efforts of uh, NDMA, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the work of the state governments, and uh, a lot of stakeholders, including CDOT and, and many other agencies. So from that perspective, uh, I would see that, that every disaster, every succeeding disaster, there's some innovation or other happening, which uh, shows that uh, uh, greater care, concern, caution, thinking, and some kind of innovation which is happening in, in the, the way in which we, uh, we plan to handle disasters, and the way in which I think uh, rescue and, and relief efforts are undertaken. So from that perspective, uh, and technology has been of a great help, and I think all of us are aware how satellite technologies have, have tremendously helped in terms of uh, cyclone uh, risk mitigation and several other technologies in respect of various other kinds of disasters. So I would say that uh, CAP project is, a, is also a, one of those uh, initiatives where uh, the government of India along with CDOT have, have actually launched a program. And uh, I would also say that the 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 level of digital infrastructure in this country has come in handy for various purposes. In fact, uh, during COVID, I think the entire country ran thanks to the tremendous amount of investment that has happened in this digital infrastructure, uh, which has happened over the last several decades and very, uh, very specifically over the last four or five years thanks to the onset of 4G and, and optical fiber communication. Today, connectivity has largely reached most of the uh, subscribers. About 98 percent of the of Indian population is covered by by uh, mobile connectivity, and uh, optical connectivity. I think we are uh, we are uh, we are about around 78 percent of the households. So uh, I would say that some for some connectivity or other is certainly there. And thanks to that, in COVID, I think the entire economy was able to function. And I think, and, and I was told that that a CAP project also during the pandemic has served nearly about 350 crore messages uh, during the pandemic in, uh, as, as, a, uh, as a test case, even though I mean, it, it was in a different context. So from that perspective, I think uh, the CAP project has, has uh, every state government has actually innovated it, innovated the use of CAP during the several uh, localized disasters, I mean, uh, such as cyclones and so on and so forth. And as mentioned by Dr. Upadhi, I, I think the uh, CAP, uh, the Common Alerting Protocol, uh, was developed as a multi-nation effort through the Indian Telecommunication, International Telecommunication Union, and the standard has evolved, which is now being adopted by all the nations. And, uh, and I'm happy to note that that Department of Telecommunication uh, and CDOT in specific, uh, along with uh, in collaboration with M uh, NDMA and MHA, have actually enabled uh, the rollout of technology based on the based on CAP. So uh, this is a, a big step forward. And I, uh, and I would also like to come back to the point that uh, the CAP is based on what is known as uh, multi-hazard handling through multi-stakeholder uh, collaboration uh, you, by using multi -te multiple technologies, I think. Because uh, in a disaster situation, one never really knows what works, I think. Because when every disaster comes with uh, some kind of a, a new flavor, you know, I think, though it may be an earthquake, the, every earthquake or an every cyclone comes with a slightly different kind of, uh, I mean, I think, impact. So therefore, I guess, I mean, one cannot be sure for, uh, I mean, uh, one cannot say with, a, with, with determinism, saying that my technology is going to work in this particular setting. So therefore, redundancy and, uh, and multiple modes, uh, I mean, I think must, must be put in place so, uh, to ensure that, uh, that the whole system is as fail safe as possible. I mean, uh, we can only talk with, with a degree of probability. I mean, there is no determinism in this whole issue. So therefore, from that perspective, I mean, what we have developed, May have, may, have, may have reached about 20, 30 percent of our expectation. I think, but we have a very, very, very long way to go. I and mean, I think we must perfect the art of ensuring that um, that all forms of technologies are used to reach. Because, I mean, obviously, one really doesn't know what is going to work in what situation. So, from that perspective, I think a lot of work needs to be done. And I'm sure that that I mean, I must congratulate NDMA for organizing this conference because it is 
it requires more than uh, maybe uh, 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 thousand, I mean, uh, more, uh, more than thousand brains to actually to sit together and do it. And I think it requires all of our collective effort to actually to think through the process and uh, and, fi and intu uh, fine tune and, and innovate on on what we have at hand. So I'm sure that this workshop is a, is going to be a fantastic effort in terms in towards in this direction. I'm sure that all your wisdom, collective wisdom on what worked, what did not work, what could work better, would all uh, be brought to the table to ensure that the solution is further fine tuned. I mean, uh, in fact, the Department of Telecommunication has actually issued orders to the uh, telecom service providers to uh, also implement the cell broadcast system because obviously, when uh, when we want to deliver. Uh, millions of messages uh, in just about a second or so, then I think it requires uh, uh, use of uh, other technologies. When I am cell broadcast is, a, is one such technology which, uh, which needs to be implemented. So I would request CROD to start working on, on the cell broadcast, a local solution for cell broadcast as well. And I am sure that uh, when NDMA and MHA will also uh, will be willing to pitch in uh, in terms of uh, support. So uh, we cannot afford to lose uh, an opportunity here and uh, cannot afford to uh, uh, to uh, st uh, avoid developing an alternate channel of, uh, of communication. So cell broadcast is very, very important. And I also hear that uh, the, uh, the 4G and all these standards, right, from 1G had some form of uh, cell broadcast uh, um, uh, connectors built into the system. I think, and, and the C dot is now recently the process of rolling out of 5G NSA core, which will also have a CBC uh, in, uh, as part of the system. And uh, 5G standards, uh, the 3GPP standards also have uh, the uh, cell broadcast uh, um, system built into the AMF um, module. Man. So from that perspective, the technologies are already there. And how do we roll out is a simple question. So therefore, I would also exhort DOT officials here to work very closely with the telecom service providers and the state governments to ensure that the cell, cell broadcast uh, feature is also uh, is, is implemented very, very quickly. So uh, to say that uh, only one set of people will be able to develop solutions is wrong. And I think obviously this is such a very complicated and uh, I mean, um, context. That therefore, I think we need to all have all the kind of resources that we need to have. So therefore, I would feel that uh, uh, we need to have greater collaboration between startups, telecom and uh, uh, startups, uh, te telecom service providers, uh, the uh, research agencies, etc., to come together and uh, and uh, build better solutions. And uh, I'm happy to note that uh, the SCAP project uh, is multi-model I mean, in the sense that it uh, reaches through mobile phone, through t television, through sat satellite communication um, medium such, uh, such as Navic and so on and so forth. So we must find out all other ways and means by which also we should uh, we, we may reach the people. And, and I would request that uh, uh, as uh, I mean uh, the, the, uh, the the question therefore is what next? I, mean, I think you know, we have gone so far. I think we should actually ensure that all the uh, departments which have which probably have an opportunity to collaborate also should be brought onto the platform and uh, we must uh, enable connectivity so that there is no region of the country where, where the people are not informed of the uh, uh, I mean, through uh, uh, this alert mechanism so there are very very remote regions of this country people are who, li who are living in islands who are people li living in the, the hilly mountainous regions um, and so therefore i think they would require a, i mean some special attention on how they would would need to be uh, kept uh, alerted the next thing which uh, I would like to say by, uh, by way of uh, uh, by further development is that perhaps we could think of organizing a hackathon. I mean, NDMA could sp and MHA could jointly organize and CDOT can come together with all the other agencies who are present here and uh, try and build some more innovative solutions because obviously we must build uh, so solutions for the common alert and protocol based on an open architecture. It cannot be like a, a closed architecture system. We must have as many people who can patch in through APIs or any other modes. So that I think we leave all the gaps covered by some form of a solution or other. The other. With this, uh, I would end my this thing. I would congratulate CDOT, I would congratulate NDMA and the other uh, organizations, here, MHA and other organizations which have come forward very eagerly uh, and, and, uh, and, and given solutions. I also hear that many state governments also have, have implemented solutions. I must, I must congratulate them as well. Uh, and uh, we look forward very avidly to supporting you, facilitating you to ensure that, uh, that these, all these multiple uh, modes of uh, alerts uh, reach the public in a, in, a, in a timely fashion because the whole 
uh, international architecture is built on early warning and the question is how early is early is a question. So therefore in some kinds of disaster settings like a tsunami for instance, I think, I mean, the, 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 the difference between life and death could be in, defined in just in some minutes, you know, I think. So therefore, it is very important that our solutions must, must be, must work within this very, very short time frame that we have before, uh, I mean, uh, disaster strikes uh, the uh, a particular area. So with these few words, I once again uh, extend my uh, con uh, congratulations and also, and uh, DOT will be very, more than willing to be a party and, su suppo uh, and supporter of all this great work that is happening. And uh, please do let us know at the end of the conference. I also look forward to the proceedings of this conference on what DOT needs to do to further the interests of the welfare of the, of the people at large. Thank you and Jaikin. ...of CDOT and NDMA for strengthening the disaster management framework. We express our sincere thanks and heartfelt gratitude to you for gracing this occasion with your esteemed presence and sharing a quantum of your precious time to be a part of this workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Sri Kamal Kishore, Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, to formally present a token of thanks and gratitude to Sri K. Rajaraman, Chairman, Digital Communications Commission, and Secretary, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India. We express our sincere thanks to you, sir. May I now request Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Executive Director CDOT, to formally present a token of thanks and gratitude to Srimati B. D. Omadegi, Additional Secretary, Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. We thank you, ma'am, for your gracious presence at the event. We once again express our sincere thanks to all our distinguished guests and dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Sri Navad Rakash, Joint Advisor, IT, National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, for the vote of thanks. Our respected uh, Sri K. Rajaraman, sir, Chairman, DCC, and Secretary, Department of Telecommunication. Sri Kamal Kishore, sir, member, and Secretary NDMA, Srimati B.V. Uma Devi, Additional Secretary, Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Dr. R.K. Upadhyay, EDC. Dr. Pankaj Dalila, Director C. Sri Kunal Satyarthi, sir, Joint Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, and all the participants present here in this hall. Good morning to each and everyone. It is my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks before conclusion of the, this inaugural session of the workshop on common alerting protocol based integrated alert system as well as also uh, where we will also discuss about ERSS. National Disaster Management Authority in association with Center for Development of Telematics is organizing this one-day workshop on disseminating the importance of CAP alert system and emergency response support system that is unified number of 112. On this occasion, I propose the vote of thanks on behalf of NDMA, CDOT, Department of Telecommunication and CTAC. First of all, I would like to express my profound gratitude to Sri K. Rajaraman sir for being provoking at this. So, CAP intends to help states into achieving coherent warning systems without major dis disruption and minimal expenses. The more and in a better manner people are informed about a yard threat or emergency, the more life can be saved and uh, resources preserved. The workshop is largely focused on creating awareness about CAP's utility as a powerful alert system. Since it is designed to precisely identify the alerting area and to communicate quickly and easily through any communication media using a universally readable format. Such, I believe, the implementation of both CAP and ERSS 
uh, we will be able to disseminate all the information in time. Sir, once again, I would like to thank for guiding us and delineating the way forward. Thank you, sir. Now, I would also like to thank Sri Kamal Kishore, Member Secretary of National Disaster Management Authority for delivering a special address and emphasizing upon the importance of both common alerting, pro alerting protocol and ERSS. I also express my sincere thanks to Madam B. 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 Kumar Devi, ma'am, Additional Secretary, uh, Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, for delivering her address and emphasizing upon the importance of uh, both common alerting protocol and PRSS. I also express my thanks to Dr. Arty Upadhyay, EDC DOT, for his presence and delivering opening remarks and highlighting the various components of the CAP based integrated alert system. I would also like to thank, extend my sincere thanks to members and officials of NDMA for providing all necessary support in organizing this workshop. That there is a product booklet that has been made available in the workshop kit. You may go through that. And for having one-to-one -one discussions, you may reach our reception help desk for having discussions on any aspects of the project. For the telecom network readiness, in meeting challenges in disaster warning. Um, Mr. Sanjay Agrawal, just one minute and he will be followed by Colonel Dhiraj Chandola, who would be introducing the entire concept of CAP. We have the third speaker, Sri Saurabh Basu. He would be, uh, he is from CDOT and he would be discussing the issues that have come up in generating and disseminating the, the messages in course of operationalizing the CAP. Namaste. I am very proud of you all. I am very proud of you all. And the first thing is that the Ganesh Chaturthi is very beautiful from the CAP. Se jodha hai. And the message is loud and clear that once we have started CAP, it should not be stopped. So, uh, I'll cover up broadly three aspects. That is, what are the early warning system, what are the global practices, then role of telecom in disaster management, and then on common error protocol, what are the telecom elements. So, if you look at that uh, there are various different types of disasters as it has been discussed in the morning and pointed out, pointed out by uh, Kamal Kishore sir that each disaster gives us a different kind of a lead time and it has a very different kind of impact in terms of the population in, the, in terms of the target area. So for that very reason we have to be alert to disseminate alerts in a appropriate time as it is desired by the, as it is required for the particular disaster. <coughs> what are the parameters which are very important for early warning system? That is, it should be geo-targeted dissemination. Only the vulnerable section should be issued alerts. Otherwise, there will be an unnecessary panic. It should be avoided. And timely dissemination, we can we cannot overemphasize this point. This is very, very important. And third is that it is it has to be effective alert so that recipient actually take notice of it and acts on it. Uh, in fact, what happens that suppose there is a tsunami and a person is watching TV and if we start scrolling a message on the bottom of the TV, th there is a very likely possibility that he will not take notice of it. So for such kind of alerts, you don't have any other option but to stop the screen and on that there should be audio as well as vi uh, visual, uh, visual messages that now you have to act immediately. That kind of thing should be there and similarly when we issue number of alerts which are not that critical, then also alerts loses their significance. 
then again it is multi mode dissemination that means all possible means may be radio tv cell broadcast sms uh, variable messaging sign boards coastal siren all mode should be adopted as far as the cap is concerned it is as per the global standard the global start standard started developing in the year 2004 and it has continued reset standard is as per 2015 the uh, early warning system should meet all or any kind of hazard it should be geo targeted warning there may be scheduling on this common uh, protocol over any and all media support image and video to anyone it should be secured and it should be as per global standards there are uh, different countries who have implemented similar platform not exactly the cap platform cap platform has been implemented in us canada australia germany and italy which is as per the global standard but other countries have also implemented similar kind of systems now we first of all talk about what is happening in us so if you look at in the center area you find that there is one ipaws open this is the open interface when on the left side we have the alert generating agencies which generates different kind of alerts maybe related to earthquake maybe related to tsunami maybe related to uh, any other kind of alerts and on the right side there are alert disseminating agencies so all of the agencies have different kind of interfaces different kind of message generating so that particular message cannot be read by the other agencies so there has to be a common alert protocol as the name indicates which connects the different interfaces to a common language so that one system can speak to the another system now we come to the common alert protocol which has been implemented in india on the left side we can see that there is imd cwc inquix dg are and fsi these are the alert generating agencies on the bottom side we have alert disseminating agencies and on the right side we can see the alert oh sorry on the bottom side we have alert authorizing agencies and on the right side we have the alert disseminating agencies all these agencies are connected to the cap platform in this what is happening that one agency can uh, the message encrypted or whatever is the format of the message from one agency it can be propagated through common alert protocol to alert disseminating agencies now here comes the major role of all of us who is present in this room in fact as indicated by sri kamal kishore sir we don't have any option to not succeed this is a very important system which is going to be very critical for times to come in india once this system is installed it will be a kind of system that there is an alert a uh, disaster alert authorizing agency selects a particular polygon in which some message is to be delivered they will frame the alert and press the button and with that button immediately the message dissemination will start not only on sms not only on cell broadcasting it will also go on radio it will also go on tv it will also go on gagan and navik it will also go on mobile apps it will go on railway announcement postal sirens and all at once immediately and depending on the severity of the alert like for earthquake and the tsunami uh, we can devise a system that where we we can do away with the authorization uh, from the alert authorizing agencies the alert generating agency itself because there is a lack of time the moment they see yes there is a warning for a tsunami they uh, work out a particular polygon and press the button and that is immediately start uh, disseminating now point here is that what all of the agencies which are being connected on cap whether it is radio tv or sms or cell broadcasting or gagan or navik or railway announcement or postal siren if any of agency loses it will result into the loss of life loss of property because if somebody who is traveling on a railway station and is not alerted properly for the impending disaster he may be affected so 
the very purpose of this workshop is that each and every one gets to the sensitivity of the implementation of common art protocol. Such kind of system fail not because of technology, because today technology is has reached to a very high level. It fails because of the lack of coordination among the teams. So that is the key point I just wanted to convey. A certain observation that sometimes uh, IMD is giving warning and no, giving warning for seven to eight states. And NASA is something like that is some part of this area. So states are having to raise question to our support centers. <coughs> Uh, some part of the center. So the platform is location based target, geo targeted alerting warning platform. So some part of the area means the accurate location information need to be very much precise so that target area can be derived by the state or just the SEOC and SDMA operator who is sitting in the SEOC can rightly uh, select the target area and disseminate the message. So that part we need to uh, look in. Another part is that uh, in some cases, in some cases. Uh, now pass, in now pass warning, station specific warning is very good and, and properly coming. But apart from the station, that the coverage area is not defined. So suppose in Delhi there is a five now pass stations, but if one column station, so what is its coverage area? It's covering five square kilometer, six cover, six square kilometer. So if I able to identify, I am able to help us in this regard which the state is also asking uh, from, uh, to us also. So that will help the state to give precise and uh, geo-targeted warning specifically for light kind of cases. Targeted messaging, which I understand is required to be sent to the center. The targeting message is how it will be impacted in which area. It is not doing impact forecasting. We want to do it with some of the issues of IMT. या एसडीएम में करेगा तब वो करेगा तो वहां पे जाएगा आप उस एजेंसी से एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं जो एजेंसी का काम ही अलग है कि तुम इम्पैक्ट और कास्टिंग हो तो थोड़ा आप भी अंडरस्टैंडिंग से उसको समझिए और तीसरा जो आप जो कह रहे हैं कि वो जो मैसेज में जो ठीक से कंटेंट नहीं दे रहे हैं क्या नहीं दे रहे देखिए आपका काम है सोल्यूशन प्रोवाइडर आपने एक सोल्यूशन दिया क्या कंप्लाइंट का स्ट्रक्चर का मैसेज दिया उस मैसेज में वो क्या डाल रहे हैं वो स्टेप किस कारण से उसको इम्पोर्टेंट समझता है या तो आप स्टेट की सीट पर बैठ जाएंगे स्टेट क्यों समझ रहा है कि भाई मेरे को यही मैसेज देना साइक्लोन आने से पहले और तीन बार बताना चाहेगा कि तैयार हो जाइए आपको ग्रेजुएशन करना खाली साइक्लोन आती थोड़ी बताएगा कि भाग तो उसके अंदर मैसेज के अंदर क्या है आप उसके ऊपर कमेंट करने ना जाए वो डोमेन है एस डी का या एन डी एम का कि हम उसके अंदर क्या लिखते हैं क्या उसकी क्वालिटी हो आप सिर्फ ये देखिए कि उसके अंदर उसका मैसेज है स्ट्रक्चर में ही वो देगा एन डी एम he has told in his speech, as well as Secretary Telcom, he told that CDOT should develop the technology for cell broadcast and relevant things. Secretary NDMA has also told that what we are generating should reach to the common man and there should be a feedback mechanism and we should see the effectiveness of the message. That is the very crisp. So, I am saying, I am overwhelmed by seeing that all state representatives are here. So I want to ask, I want to seek their help for this. As Prime Minister Saab has told very clearly, Sabka Saab, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, Sabka Prayas. So the last point, Sabka Prayas. So he also told Team India. So for this project, we all are one team. You are very important stakeholder. CDOT is technology developer and technology provider. You are the actually user. And if we develop the technology, if you will not use it, if it is not going to reach to the common persons, and common person feedback is not reaching to us, we cannot improve our technology. Just now, I was telling the example of Indian Railways and All India Radio, when one gentleman, sir, was asking a question. So I need a help from state agencies because India is a typical combination probably only very few countries or only country in the world which has a technology from United States of America, which has a technology from Russia, which has a technology from Europe, Israel, Korea, everywhere. You see, we are riding on telecom service provider network. 
2G, 3G, 4G. Now 4G core is provided by C dot. Otherwise, all is from either Chinese, JTY, European, Ericsson, Nokia, US. So, so many uh, these countries are there. As a user, when we are using them, we are using at interface level at a black box. We are paying AMC. But when actually we are implementing this CAP platform, we need to have the details of those technology interfaces and how this technology is working. Because our CAP implementation in India is different than the rest of the world. We are not investing in your existing legacy things. We are using, actually we are saving the money. Otherwise it's a thousands and thousands of crores project, which we are completing phase one and phase two just 500 crores, which is a peanut if you compare with the MNCs. So we need a support from you, all of you, wherever your systems are working. You please connect with the technology provider, whomsoever it may be. Our team will go to you, will come with you. We all are one team, Team India. We want the specification on how its system is working so that we can design the interworking and we can bring that legacy system into our cap platform. Otherwise, we, this project cannot be completed without your help. So we need your help. Similarly, like Secretary NDMA has told, you please ask the hard questions and this full day, myself, Saurabh and complete 35 plus people, team is here. You all are most welcome. We can have a nuclear discussion one is to one. And please, let's all join hand together, whomsoever it may be for the success of this project. Success of this project is, one is resolving this technological part, filling the gaps, and another is this reachable time, time sensitivity for earthquake, tsunami, very less time is there. Cyclone, you are having five to six days. Lightning, you have six to eight hours. So what media we should select and all? Technology, we can develop any technology. Technology development is not a challenge. C dot is is master in that. But rolling off this technology, user is using, and then it reaches to the common man for upliftment of this socio-economic and this our common people. There is a change. Systems view of the early warning system to the overall introduction of the CAP and all the issues and challenges that we are facing in installing and making it operational. As we all know, the the, uh, the taste of pudding lies in eating. We have to test the system. We have to make it uh, uh, operational across the length and breadth of the country, which is a huge, huge challenge. I request all the states now, you know, there are many more sessions, all, all the states which have come here to participate in the sessions actively and have requested uh, Nanji also to create the kind of space so that we have more participation, we have more issues being raised in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the subsequent sessions, and it should be more interactive. Sir, so, this is a question in session. Yes. In 2017, Andhra Pradesh has a location-based simple SMS to develop. Today, we have been talking about 5 years. For 4 years, we have been working on C.B. We have told you that it is one year before फॉर्मल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हुआ होगा लेकिन वो तीन साल से पहले से काम कर रहा है फिर ये बताया गया कि चार ही कंट्री में हुआ अब ये पता चला संजय अग्रवाल जी की प्रेजेंटेशन से कि और कंट्रीज में भी हो चुका है कुछ और नाम से कहते हैं इसको ये नहीं कि हम कोई बहुत वर्ल्ड की पांचवी कंट्री और बहुत बड़ी नई टेक्नोलॉजी कर रहे हैं और हमारे यहाँ पे दो में सिंपल एस कर चुके हैं वो बी में हुआ इस काम को हमें करने में पाँच साल लग गए जो सिंपल एस एम की चीज़ है मैं अपने पुलिस जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी से पूछना चाहता हूँ जो स्टेज पे है ये समझना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि जितनी भी ये प्रेजेंटेशन है इसमें खाली हमें रेड और ब्लू बॉक्स दिख जाते हैं पता नहीं चलता कि हो क्या रहा है कोई हमें सिंपल तरीके से ये बताए कि इसमें कर क्या है क्या चीज है जो पाँच साल लग जा रहे हैं वो तो हमने ऑफिस में बैठ के भी जानने की कोशिश करी आपके साथ एक सेशन में जान नहीं पाया अब यहाँ पे जो लोग इतने ये इस तरह कैसे सवाल पूछेंगे तो उनके बिहार के शायद मैं ही पूछ रहा हूँ कि अगर पाँच साल हमें एक चीज़ को लग जाए जो वर्ल्ड में हो चुकी है हमारी कंट्री में हो चुकी है हम कर क्या रहे हैं हम इसको सी रॉट को जो है 200 करोड़ रुपए तो एक चीज़ के लिए दे रहे हैं सवा सौ करोड़ रुपया हम ओ के लिए दे रहे हैं 
सात करोड़ रुपए हम पेमेंट कर चुके हैं तो अगर उस कॉन्टेक्ट में हमें पता लग जाए कि हमने जो पेमेंट किया है हमने क्या चीज किया है अगर सिंपल भाषा में हमें बता दिया जाए कि कर क्या रहे हैं क्यों टाइम लगा वो बार बार कहते हैं लीजे सी और ये सब वो सब वर्ड है समझ में नहीं आता आप बता दें आपकी समझ क्या है at the i will request sunal ji to respond to all these very valid issues without getting into the contractual procurement issues these are not the issues that we need to discuss here but general overall the uh, the design the system design the system uh, the working of the system the dissemination of the messages if we can you can give your perspective i think you since you are from the dm practice area you would perhaps be able to explain it in simpler terms in clear terms so that would give uh, a very good introduction and i hope that uh, we retain the simplicity of the messages and uh, we also hope that there is lot more participation lot more clarity Shri Kumar Satyarthi, Joint Secretary, Policy and Plan, NDMA, Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have already informed you, you can reach out to our reception headquarters for any information about any aspects of the project implementation in your respective states and cities. And we also request you to go to the project booklet that has been provided in the workshop case. Our next technical session is centered on the integration of alert generation agencies with the CAT platform. This session. Shri J. Padmanabhan, Scientist, e Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, in Kois. Dr. Amrit Singh, Additional Director, Defence Geoinformatics Research Establishment, DGRB. Dr. Sumit Chandra, Deputy Director, Forest Survey of India, FSI. We extend our hearty welcome to the panelists of this session. Now I request the chair of the session to take the proceedings forward. That is, that includes alert generating agencies, disaster management managers from all the states and UTs, alert disseminating agencies, and the technology enablers under one roof. This morning we have seen how people are talking about CAP, when it started, where we are now, and we are where we are heading. Morning, my friend Krishna Fazji has given a good example of how Lord Ganesha has return the Mahabharata. I will take you to Treta Yuk when Lakshmana Lakshman Ji was jab baan laga aur Ram Ji parishan thai ki Aushati kon le ke hai, kaha se le ke hai. Finally Hanuman was selected, Hanuman Ji ko bheja kiya, aur ho Aushati ka naam jaantte thai, pehchaantte nahi thai, aur pura kis kinda parvat utha ke ke liya hai, ke parhu isme te le lo, jo aap ke agency hai. So that was the Treta Yuk, not the present Yuk. 
I consider the C dot is a, in a in a Hanuman room and cap is a Sanjeevni booty. In the cap, we got different type of jadi booty like IMD, CWC, DGRE, forest fire, and one more five type of now nobody knows to which medicine will be used where. So this is the role of C dot to collect all this medicine, put it in one format, and take it to the all the states and give the give relief to our people. In that contest, now we got five alert generating agency here, and I request one by one. Time is limited, ten minutes each to each and every individual the present how what they are doing and how they are doing it i'm happy to inform you people they out of five alert generating agencies four alert generating agencies have already integrated with the system only the forest i think forest has not yet is done and very soon they will also come on board so from starting the from first one, I'll start Dr. Uh, I have a story that I have to say 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 that I have तो मैं जो अलर्ट जनरेटिंग एजेंसी में आपके साथ सेशन में चेयर मुझे बना दिया गया लेकिन मैं ये समझना चाह रहा हूँ कि इसमें काम क्या इन्वॉल्व है क्योंकि जो थोड़ा समझते हैं कि कॉमन अलर्ट प्रोटोकॉल भाई एक कॉमन प्रोटोकॉल है उसमें बता दो कि आप इस तरह से मैसेज भेजना चालू कर दो तो आपने अपने मतलब जब आप अपने प्रजेंटेशन दें अलर्ट जनरेटिंग एजेंसी तो ये जरूर बताएँ कि जिससे समझ में आए हमें कि किस तरह का काम इन्वॉल्व है आप लोग बहुत सा फोरकास्टिंग में फोर वार्निंग में अलग अलग तरह के काम कर रहे हैं वो ये जो सेशन है शायद ये उसके बारे में जानने के लिए नहीं है कि आप क्या कर रहे हैं और किस तरह का आपका कैपेबिलिटीज है वो तो अलग चीज़ होगी यहाँ पे ये जानने का उद्देश्य है कि कैब कंप्लाइंट आपने अपने जो अलर्ट जनरेटिव मैसेज दिए हैं उसको कैब कंप्लाइंट बनाने के लिए किस तरह का वर्क इन्वॉल्व था क्या उसमें चीज़ थी जिससे आपसे समझ के कुछ और लोगों को भी बताया जा सके कि खुद अपने लोग काम करना क्या चालू कर सकते हैं कुछ करा जा सकता है या इसमें हमें किसी न किसी कंट्री से किसी को ऐसे ढूंढ के लाना पड़ेगा कि वही करके दे हमें या हम भी कर सकते हैं अपने आप इंटीग्रेटेड एंड व्हाट दे हैव इंटीग्रेटेड इन द सिस्टम ओवर टू यू बोला गुड आफ्टरनून रेस्पेक्टेड चेयर को चेयर एंड अदर पार्टिसिपेंट प्रेजेंट इन दिस हॉल आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द कैप इंप्लीमेंटेशन एम बी Uh, what is the current status? Uh, what is our future requirement uh, to disseminate the uh, forecasting as an alert uh, generating agency? The, the IMD is on the alert generating agency. Our organization structure is uh, Secretary of the MUS, then Director General of Metrology. And then we have these different uh, divisions to provide these observations and then uh, um, Panchang, Sun Moon information. We have the Positional Astronomic Center. And specialized uh, divisions, we have the National Weather Forecasting Center. Basically, they are providing this uh, forecasting. This is our forecasting main uh, divisions to provide the forecast. And OWB unit, numerical weather predictions unit. Basically, so, uh, these uh, divisions, we are run the different types of model to generate the forecast. And we have the information services and um, system and services division. This is the services division. Basically. Provides this, all these uh, collecting this information and disseminating this all this forecast to the different mode of communication, including the uh, CAP alerting protocols. And this another satellite methodology, this all the other other observations, these are the all the observations we are already are having this uh, civil aviation um, services. Also, we are providing the forecast for the civil aviation division that is uh, organization, hydrology division, because in, uh, with, uh, in coordination with the fact, um, central water commissions. We are providing this information to them also, as well as we provide the agreement services for the apartments and teacher. And we have these different six seasonal metropolitan centers from Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, and this Gohati, Nagpur. And 
at this uh, in and another was in headquarter we have them at new delhi and these under this uh, we have them we have 29 centers with generating this as uh, that is a uh, warning and uh, we have already this they have been uh, explained in earlier side by side out that we have 29 centers already integrated in this uh, uh, project these are the different uh, as an uh, alert as you can see we are uh, only one indian metallurgical department on with the uh, national uh, <coughs> center for this uh, providing this uh, uh, forecasting we are providing the different type of forecast of the cyclone thunderstorm dust storm and all type of coastal weather that is uh, port warning uh, sea uh, fisherman warning heat wave cold wave and we have the different uh, time scales of forecast uh, th from um, short range to uh, long range forecast and uh, these are the multi hazard because we are providing this information in the different color codes uh, green there is no warning if it is there and on our websites also we are providing this type of information in the different colors for what is green is a no warning yellow uh, unusual that is uh, preparation and or orange yellow dangerous and unusual phenomena if it is there and that is the access that is alert we have to extreme event if it is there we have the different types of uh, hazards already have explained these are the heavy rain, thunderstorm, cyclone, coastal rigs warning and fishermen warning, uh, heat wave, cold wave. These are the different sectors we have already included in my previous slides. As we have uh, integrated or provided this, all this information, these different sectors, uh, uh, railways <coughs> and this transport also, tourism also and mountains, uh, urban ecology uh, part uh, that is also. This is the existing dissemination system at present uh, using my IMD. Basically, we have the different types of communication, mode of communication for this uh, national as well as the global uh, scenario also. Basically, all the data in the national observation we are getting from this information from the observatory, we are disseminating to the global community also for the, that is for the uh, global telecommunication system. From there, all the global information we are getting here, this information also we are running using in assimilating our model. After that, we are generating the forecast and then it is disseminating by the different mode of communication. This communication at existing, we are using the social media and uh, mobile apps. We have the different types of mobile apps uh, already that is uh, Damini, uh, Mouso, Macdo and as well as the, our, uh, product, our uh, information proof available as the Umong app also. And we have integrated the cap uh, before in, uh, that uh, at, uh, we, at uh, NDMA project you know, as per the requirement of the WMO. We have uh, already integrated, but in this integration, we are not able to integrate the all mode of communication. Only we are generating the RSS feed, and this is disseminating by the different that is Google and Gmail, uh, this global multi other uh, uh, alert systems because it is our responsibility as an WMO member country, as an IMD, is an one member. Uh, organizations who have to, uh, that is disseminating the information in the CAP format also. Now you already explained some previous slides, common level protocol is the standard format to uh, information has to be collected the, from the forecast in the different uh, forecast to be uh, uh, put up in the common platform and has to be disseminated the, all the mode of communications. And uh, these are the basically as uh, our WMO guideline already as and we have started this uh, generating the cap compatible format and IMD's cap already is operational in the WMO alert hub and this alert is uh, already disseminating by the um, Google, EcoWeather, Apple and the GMAS but main issues was there this cap uh, format is not disseminating by the all other this is TV, mobile and uh, radio and all mode of communication as per requirement of the WMO cap compact format. But uh, we thankful to NDMA and CDOT they have uh, conceived this uh, uh, that is a new uh, cap, uh, cap uh, platform, integrated cap platform to disseminate this uh, that is uh, shortcomings of the IMD's cap implementation to the new integrated alert system. And these are the common level rule of IMD that is this alert already available in the existing because these things already we have uh, disseminating from the our headquarters. We are uh, uploading if there is an information that is severe weather there, we are uploading this information with the WMA alert hub. And this alert hub is consumed by this Google and this uh, Echo Weather also, you know, the Echo Weather is uh, one of the public uh, private uh, weather companies. They also accessing this information. See, 
Central Water Commission is one of the five alert generating agencies. It is known to all of you and we are generating the alerts for floods. Regarding our flood forecasting services, we have in all 1,730 stations. Out of this, 1,543 stations are flood monitoring stations, whereas exclusive rainfall stations are 187. In that, uh, we have 333 flood forecasting stations, out of which again, level forecasting stations are 199, and inflow forecasting stations are 134. These 199 level forecasting stations, they have been integrated with the CAP platform. And uh, the alerts were generated um, this, uh, uh, this year in the monsoon, uh, for all the 199 stations where uh, flood water reached about boiling level. We issue two kinds of forecast. One is short range forecast which is uh, with the lead time of 24 hours. Another is five day advisory forecast which is um, a rainfall runoff model and provides forecast for five days. We are also involved in inundation forecasting which I would cover later. See, we are using uh, state-of-the-art technology in all the uh, four stages of flood forecasting activities, that is data collection, data transmission, data processing, and forecast dissemination. We are doing data collection uh, with the use of sensors for, all, for water level as well as for uh, rainfall. Data transmission is through uh, satellite mode. In data processing, we are having up-to-date uh, this uh, models, uh, rainfall runoff models and uh, statistical models and forecast dissemination is through various modes. Uh, the forecasts are uh, uh, issued for these designated flood period which is different for different river basins. For northeastern basin that is for Brahmaputra, Barak, Tista and for Kashmir in, uh, in Jhelum basin it is from 1st May to 31st October and then all other basins up to Krishna Basin in south, it is 1st June to 31st October. And then south of Krishna, that is in peninsular India, it is from 1st June to 31st December. This is how our uh, network expanded from, uh, first of all, the first station was opened at Delhi in the year 1958. And now we are having 333 stations. Our target is to have 375 stations by the end of this plan, that is the year 2026. This is the state-wise distribution of FM stations. And you can very well see that uh, inflow forecast stations are more in Western India and in Southern India where dams and garages are more, whereas level forecast stations are more in Northern India. This, uh, the, we have 29 divisional flood control rooms in the country from where the forecast is generated. We have inputs from all CWC site, project authorities about reservoir releases, and from flood meteorological organization of IMD regarding rainfall and quantitative precipitation forecast. This, uh, from divisional level itself, this is disseminated to state governments, to civil authorities, and to the media. And this is uploaded on our web portal where some uh, central flood control room, CFCR is at Delhi, at Arkepuram. It works 24 by 7. And from here we issue various kind of bulletins to ministries and NDMA and to MHA. Different flood categories are normal water level we call only if it is up to warning line. From warning line to danger line, it is above normal, and from danger line to highest flood line, it is severe, and then from highest uh, uh, above highest flood level, it is extreme flood category. Uh, the it is three hours. This is the sample of the orange bulletin and red bulletin. We have another IMD CWC NDRR bulletin, uh, uh, which is also given to the states and. This covers the details about the NDRF deployment also in the country and that flood affected India. We issue daily flood situation report from advisories which has a different uh, various uh, just information with this, useful information. Uh, 
And this is the format of the daily bulletin, which shows all the three stages and also the part two of this shows um, inflow forecast details. We are also working on inundation forecasting and uh, uh, one forecast model from Godal of Godavari and Tapis. We are going to take up uh, from NRSC, which is developing with the National Hydrology Project. This year only we are going to take up this one. Mahanadi Delta, this was developed by CDAC and this has been sent to government of Odisha for verification, bond to verification. And coach analyst and the uh, uh, my colleagues from Chaos Management and State of uh, uh, Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to present uh, no, how exactly we have implemented for inquiries perspective in terms of CAP. This is the overall functionary of inquiries uh, to give a snap on. No? Our main mission of inquiries is to provide ocean information and advisory services to society, industry, government agencies and scientific community to sustain ocean observations and consistent information through systematic and focused research. Providing the services to a fisherman community and our stakeholders are wide in the range. Uh, if you see the right side uh, panel, which is talking about our user communities like fishing communities, coastal, uh, nu nuclear power plants, and they do receive our advisories in terms of tsunami and uh, storm surges and also ocean state forecast, which are falling under the multi-hazard framework. If you consider our services at a gamut, it is divided into two systems. One is eco system based services, the other one is multi-hazard early warning. We usually assist coast guards to you know, take up how the trajectory could be. So, uh, this is the slide on the tsunami early warning service that, that is currently being you know, rendered from this organization to the uh, disaster management agencies as well as public. Uh, I am not going in detail on to the uh, entire early warning service. If you see the SOP of public response and the threat levels that are being you know, given on the right uh, top corner, we have divided the tsunami advisories into you know, different uh, bulletin types. We normally issue four kinds of bulletins to both the disaster management agencies as well as public. The bulletin one is whenever there is a tsunami genic earthquake, we normally issue a potential statement that you know whether it's going to have a possibility or not based on the model results. And the second bulletin is always type two is a tsunami is going to reach and what could be the wave height, expected wave height. And the third type of bulletin is confirmed tsunami. Based upon the observational data, we 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 are getting you know uh, into the warning system. We are receiving more than 800 stations altogether, right from tsunami buoys as well as tide gauges across the international front. And we constantly feed this data into our decision support tool to up, uh, to upgrade or downgrade the advisories. And we also issue a final type of bulletin. These are the four kinds of bulletin. Uh, uh, currently, the warning center is issuing to the general public and out of these, if you consider the tsunami alone, we categorize into four threat categories, warning, alert, watch and no threat. The research that is rendered from the inquiries, we, whenever there is a cyclone issue, a cyclone being issued by the IMD, we take the uh, track from IMD and we run the model and give possible storm surge extent and what would be the inundation extent and what would be the expected wave height at the particular mandal level coast, coastal location. We divided entire uh, Indian coast into CFPs, coastal forecast points. Each point is at a mandal state and we are we are uh, deriving from the model results. Thank you sir. Good morning uh, Shivar Coach here, dignitaries and all participants. Uh, PGRE is uh, under the Armament and Combat Engineering uh, cluster of DRG and it was raised uh, in 2020 as a merger of uh, two other labs, uh, SASE and TTRM, which were already working in this area. And uh, the mission uh, and vision of uh, DGRE is like this that 
we want to be a leader in the development of critical technologies for enhancing com combat effectiveness with a focus on terrain and both of the engineering area and as well as the tracks of their patrolling as well in induction and deinduction we are coming out of lambs uh, and sticks in our the districts and the warning is uh, one of the five skills where each skill has a certain implications and it also suggests what is the expected action on the general side.